All right. Our next question says, do you think this situation will push Malia to open up and tell Chan that Chris is harassing her? I know her fear of rejection keeps her from speaking up due to feeling like she is complicating other people's lives with her problems. Um, yeah, I think the situation uh, will push her to tell in Chan. And honestly, Chan's watching her anyway. So if she don't tell him, she, he's going to pop up. He's going to figure He's going to figure out a way to let her know that he knows without letting her know that he's watching her. And that's how he knows, you know? Um, but either way, one way or another, Chan's about to find out. Uh, they're about to have a conversation because Chan already knows. Because, you know, so they're going to have this conversation. Um, coming up soon one way or another. So yeah, um, that's I think the questions. Her fear of rejection keeps her, yeah. And, and, and the new relationship, no, you don't wanna b bombard, you know, this new love interest in your life with all of your family issues, with all your life issues and in fear of running them off. And Malia, she does fear that. She's, it's been five years since she's even pursued a relationship, she hasn't even dated anybody. You know, and then when she's finally interested, then all this stuff is happening. Of course, you know, it's just like oh, th he's going to run off. You know, who wants to be bothered with all this? You know, so I definitely understand, um, you know, her taking that standpoint. But, you know, at this point, sh she has to get some reinforcement. She has to get some people, you know, on her side because um, Chris is just taking things to a whole nother level. OK. Um. I I agree with Miss Curie all the way. Um, do you think it will push her to tell? No, I don't think she, as bad as she may want to, she probably won't because she hasn't at this point. As a matter of fact, she's been kind of keeping it from him. Um, and like, you know, Curie said, he's going to find out. I mean, he got a whole team on it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's going to, he's going to find out. And then, you know, there's the whole dynamic of, you know, why didn't you tell me? And then, oh, but how did you know? You know, because he got people following her, you know. And so, um, and she, I think she sees him maybe not as perfect. I'm trying to think of the words. You know, she may see him as higher status. You know, there hasn't been any drama coming from his side. You know what I mean? Whereas they've already been in a fight. Her family has already been in a fight. Uh, mama don't care. She just wants you to hook up with him because he got money. Daddy's a punk. And, you know, he got dad in his pocket. You know, it's like all this. And then she got this crazy stalker. And then there's this situation with Antonio and his girl already, you know, and she's like, man, I, I tell this. And then especially, you know, because a lot of people. I hate to say this and bring up race, but they think that Negroes are crazy and, you know, full of drama anyway. That person and all this drama and stuff, you know, um, with him coming, you know, from being um, Asian or is he Chinese? Okay. <laughs> I was thinking, okay, triads. I was thinking Chinese. Um, and so... Yeah, she's probably trying, she's going to try and, I think she would, if it was me, I would try to keep it from him um, until maybe I, no, I would just, I would just, you know, let him find out maybe, you know, he's already shown up. <laughs> he's, uh, uh, Chris has already shown up on a date. So it's like, I might do something um, sort of like dry snitching to where, okay, I know this Negro's going to show up if we're here you know, and then let Chris just really act up like she's with Chan and maybe she'll kiss Chan and like do the most to set off Chris so he could be Chris and lose his mind in public and then Chan could take care of it without her having to say anything. So, um, wow, that's a little toxic. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that's what Lily would do. But um, yeah, that's, yeah. She probably would feel like she would be complicating his life. She don't. She don't want to bring all that, you know. So that's my answer.
Um, I honestly, I, I really hope so. Um, because the thing is, if I have somebody that is down to protect me and I don't got to worry about anything, oh, baby, you better come through and give me that work. So you all I have to do is just say something. You're going to take care of it. Hell yeah. But then I also see the other side of it where it's like, well, what if I do tell, sorry, you guys, <laughs> what if I do tell him? And then what if he thinks, wow, I'm just, I'm really crazy. Or I have this drama or what if I brought this down upon myself? And you know, he doesn't see it the way that I do. Like this man is truly stalking me. Because you tell some men, hey, this man is bothering me. They'd be like, well, what'd you do? Like the detective, right? Well, what were you wearing? What'd you say to him? And, and I'm not going to need all that. So I see it if Chan doesn't really blame it on her and he just sticks up for her the way that she wants him to, by all means. But I could see it the other way where it's like being scared to say anything. And then also being independent anyways, not really having to depend on a man before anyways. Like I said, not being in a relationship for so long. I'm sure it is hard to ask him, like, hey, can you help me? Or, hey, this man is bothering me. What do I do? So I, I can see it from both sides. But honestly, if I was her, I would just tell Chan, like, baby, you don't have to do it. I don't want to be stressed out about it anymore. I do think the situation is going to force Malia to have to tell Chan. I don't think Malia is going to want to tell Chan. I just don't think that she can keep this a secret. Chris is out of his mind. Okay. He's for the least. You know what I mean? Like he's just doing stuff for absolutely no reason. And, you know, I, I, think, I think it was like, Alicia, you were talking about just everything. Like the first night she hung out with him, Erica acted stupid, you know, and he had already asked her, Hey, can I take you home? And she's like, no, I'm gonna go with my friends because they, you know, they brought me here, so I'm gonna go back with them. And that almost turned into fist fight. So like drama number one, right? Then we already got drama number two because daddy didn't do what he did and then went to the house, you know, for Chan to meet the family and talk about the whole loan and all of that. And then Frank was acting stupid. He was acting like Trey from Boys in the Hood. He was shadow boxing. He did a lot, right? Uh, her mom was doing a lot. So um, he already saw her and Mike Bar having a very fiery exchange. You know, um, this whole situation with Antonio, she's afraid that, you know, she still hasn't told him that, you know, she spent the night at Antonio's house and something almost went down, baby. She straddled that fence, right? She didn't tell him that. But they weren't, I mean, in essence, they weren't in a relationship. So it was like, does she really need to say something about that, you know? Because he wasn't her man. Like, she was just trying to get some information, got drunk, got carried away, and and almost committed a, a really big crime, like, for real. So, what's not going on? Now, you got April who wants to swing on you when you see her. And Malia ain't like, she's not that chick. Like, she's not going to be like, well, when I see you, then I see you. Like, let's get him up, right? Malia's like, no, um, I'll take a diplomatic approach, honey. Come give it to some of us East Side chicks and we're going to run you some, basically. Um, we're not backing out. We're just not going to do it. But Malia's not, she's not that person. She is going to, ah, it was a misunderstanding. <laughs> it's not like that. I've known him since I was 11 or 12, right? So, She's got a lot of stuff going on. So when you start counting bad interactions that she's been having, now I need to tell you about this rando named Chris who who makes coffee. Um, and now he's showing up in, in random places. It's just like, my God, Jesus, like the, the, the timing is off. Like, could I have met him a year before all of this stuff play out? Like, God, like the universe, what y'all doing with this timing? The timing sucks. So I wouldn't say nothing. I'd be like, because, okay, so I have oh, older brothers. And they have dated women. There's been some drama because the ex-boyfriend doesn't want to go their ex-husband or somebody's still married. And there's some paperwork that needs to be signed like that. And people aren't letting go. So then my brothers have had to have fist fights with men because so-and-so's ex just is refusing to let go of her hand. And she's like, I don't want you. It's been a while, right? Men can get turned off by women having, you know, extra baggage. I mean, think about it. If you were dating a guy... And his ex was vowed to kill everybody that he's with. And she's breaking out tires and, and uh, well, not breaking out tires. You can't break out a tire, baby. God help Jesus. You know, busting out windows, flattening tires, you know, scratching up your car, bitch, you know, writing all that in there. I'm like, that would make me be like, you are a nice guy, but that over there entirely too much. Like, do I really want to sign up 
to be harassed now by this new like like by you and your old chick and i'm the new person coming into the situation it doesn't look good right so i see it from the perspective of Malia might be like let me see what i can do to take care of this situation before getting him involved because i don't want this man to run away honey he's everything you want <laughs> he's everything you need right but then going through all this and the baby is just so cute and i'm just like looking at i'm gonna I'm go upstairs and bite you in your face it was so cute. Thank you little nephew um so yeah Leah's in a really uh ugly place but i feel like with the way that chris is beating it's gonna come out it ha there's no other choice because when somebody escalating things to this extreme eventually have to tell it or it's going to reveal itself like alicia said what if she was somewhere and they had a little club having a little dance and a little kiss and he runs out on the dance floor screaming hi care bear ow oh. Hair bear, you look like yourself another haircut. I like it. Your age is right. Nah. I mean, all that. Me what me I say? Nah. Malia and, and going through this, and who's gonna find out when they gonna find out? Is find out. Everybody gonna find out. I mean, if you, the only person who does know her best friend Eva. Her parents don't know, but it wouldn't wouldn't be like they would care anyway, to be honest. Like Frank, he's not out here being nobody's daddy. He's out here hiding from the triad, hiding from Malia because he don't want to answer questions about all this money that came up missing. All her mom can think about is the wedding of the century. Um, her sisters aren't in the position to understand any. Like, what did you do to him? Well, what did you say? You know, what I love is when people say stuff like, I mean, he must have done something. Nobody acts that way for nothing. Oh, some people do act this way for nothing. Some people just set their sights on you and there's nothing that you can do about it. You haven't done anything. And that's one of the things that I've missed when on like on those shows that I like to watch all the stocking on the ID channel. The women were like, I don't doing anything. And some of the some of those detectives are like, it's not about what you wore, how you did your hair or your outfit or shoes, or you were drinking or you were at a club. Some people just become fixated on you. They saw you up ass. Just because they saw you. You didn't have to do nothing. So it's not your fault. It's his fault. <laughs> Frank, Frank ain't gonna do nothing. I just wanted to piggyback on that one. Frank, she did tell her dad, oh, that's bothering me. What Frank gonna do? He a bitch, too. All right, um, I'll go on. <laughs> um, did, did, oh no, I'm going to try not to laugh. Um, did Chris really think it would be romantic? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, did Chris really think it would be romantic to dress up rodents in a wedding dress and tuxedo and burn their faces with acid? Um, I don't think he meant it to be romantic. I think he meant it as a threat. Like... I'm going to mess you up. Like, I'm crazy enough to send you this. This is my idea. You know, uh, I want to be married to you. I want you to be in my life. But, you know, you f if you give me any trouble, blah, blah, blah. I think it was meant to scare her. It was, um, I, I, I really pray, even though he's crazy. So you might think that in his head, he's like, well, she might like this. Uh, maybe it started off as a nice gift. Maybe it was just two regular mice <laughs> in a tuxedo and a dress. And then he just got pissed off thinking about some stuff and poured acid on their faces. And was like, well, it's already done. Let me go ahead and send this. So she needed, oh, you know, this is my gift to her. Um, so yeah, but on the real, I don't think he meant it to be, uh, romantic. He tried that before, I believe. I don't, I think it was at the graduation or something where he actually brought f flowers and she wouldn't take them. And so he threw, so that was maybe a romantic gest gesture. This was meant to scare her. Like, B, I'm serious. Um, <laughs> I'm standing on business. <laughs> you about to be mine. So, uh. Yeah, that's that's my answer. Yeah, I definitely 
I agree. I, I feel like the taxidermy, uh, was it mice or squirrels? I definitely thought it was a, a, it was a gift originally. And then after, you know, he saw her with Chan, he just got pissed off. And it was like, when crazy people get mad, it's, it's not any, um, accountability. It's what you made me do, you know? And so that was what the gift, look what you made me do. You upset me. You cheated on me. You broke my heart. Look what you made me do. You pushed me here. Can't you see how much I love you? Can't you see Malia? You know, and so I think that was his whole goal to show her, this is how much I love you. And I need you to see how much I need you and how much I am willing to do you. That I will burn your face off if you don't love me back. <laughs> and that is some love, baby. That is some love for your A, okay? <laughs> Um, you are clearly showing signs of mental illness, um, putting rats. First of all, where did you get the rats from? I'd ask that. Now, are these rats that you done got from PetSmart, or are these some rats that you just seen in the corner? It was like, yeah, I'm going to get those. <laughs> like, just no thank you. And then you go as far as to get a little mini tuxedo and a little mini dress to fit them. That is so premeditated, and you are out of your mind. First of all, touching on some rats, you're... It's too much. Can't do it. Ain't gonna be able to do pineapples. Can't do it. And then you're gonna dress them up. And then not only do that, but then you somehow have acid and you burn their faces off. That is mental illness. Obviously, you see me and you as some rats uh, that, that are soulless, apparently, because we don't have to have no face. Like, you know how people, not people, but how they have the, um, the um, behavior analysis unit, right? And they talk about with these psychopaths and serial killers, how they do certain stuff and how they act is, you know, how they think. And him doing something like that, obviously, like I said, he doesn't see value in himself or her. And that they are deserving of life. That's why he's going to burn their freaking faces off. That's just, it's too much. It's too much. And the fact that you thought that that was okay to send as a gift, you're letting people know that you're out of your mind, that you're crazy, and that you need to be in an institution. If it's not jail, an institution, please. Did anyone else get a visual of Chris trying to chase down some rats and catch them? <laughs> that is level of dedication, baby. And and how long did it? Did you outfit? together or did you have to go and find them? <laughs> right. I'm like, he put a lot of effort into this mess. Right, with them little baby scissors kind of waving around. You know, instead of my, she said pet smart. Now I'm thinking maybe the squirrels were a better bet because where would you find mice to get taxidermy? Go find you, some, catch you some squirrels. Um, Praise God. Jesus. Lord Jesus, uh, Bella, thank you for that. Because, like you said, where do you get these? Like, see, because when I think about stuff, like either you went to Petco and, and, and bought something, or did you catch some stuff? Because at that point, I'm thinking, my God, did they have lice or, or you know, or did they have fleas or something, whatever? Like, honey, could you imagine getting bit up like <laughs> these little bumps on my skin? Start it was horrible. And then, yeah, the whole outfit thing, like, they fit their bodies perfectly. So, I guess we're going to figure out next few is that Chris got a sewing machine. <laughs> he got a sewing machine somewhere, baby. He can outfits together, okay? He's about to have a hot boy summer. Okay. Y'all are about to kill me with these damn lights. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> oh, he thought that was romantic. Um, like Alicia said, I do think that while he was putting this little thing together, that he did he was like, oh, I shouldn't have to go through these lengths to get her. Like, he was he was cool, right? But something happened. Something snapped. He got angry and was like, you know what? Let me send her a little message. You know, it's, it's very juvenile if you think about it. Like, I want to give you something, but I want to break the toy that I'm going to give to you. Because I want, I want you to have a toy, but I also want to show you that this is your value and it's mean to me because it's broken. And so, like um, Bella was saying, it's like, 
you don't even see yourself as a very um, worthy being over here tracking down dirty mice out of, you know, or whatever. Could you imagine if Chris was like, I got to find the right ones? I should match that outfit perfectly. Like, it's the right Imagine he was walking around, taking manhole covers off and going down into the sewer, trying to catch something. Like, a whole nother level of crazy we have not explored and I don't ever want to. You know what I mean? So how, how would he think that was romantic? Chris is very much disturbed. Like Bella said, he needs he need to go to a couple places. He needs to jail, he needs to go to a mental institution, or he needs to inhale. Like those are the only three places that are suitable. Jail, mental institution, go straight to hell, right? Um, because he's not gonna stop, you know. And and for him to have burnt those those mice's face, like you were sending a message. Like, I can be soft. I can be romantic. I can I can do taxidermy. <laughs> I can I can do all these wonderful things. But at the same time, I can hurt you if that's what you need, Malia. You don't want this, Malia. You don't want these flowers. You don't want that little dress. I'll you a wedding dress, girl. I can't even imagine if like Melissa. Malia opened up the package and fell out. Could you imagine she would have woke up being kidnapped, rolled up into some old nasty into a white van? It would have been a whole wedding dress that Chris made and makes for you. Fit it. So no, nah. he has a problem. Problem. There's nothing romantic about that. But it does take me back to like being a little kid where a boy would give you something and then like break it, but they still wanted you to have it because I want you to know I wanted you to have it but it's not gonna function the way that you want it to function because it is a little bit broken. And I want you to know, I'll break you down too, where this is what I think about you. Like we talked about how people will do things, but they live for the letdown. They always talk about that, where people will try to get you excited for something, but it's like, and look at, she was, she was super excited. Oh, the, the beautiful box, the bow. And um, you know, like, like he had a little card on the front of it that said something really cute. So she was thinking, oh baby, this is Shan. <laughs> I'm about to get that ring, baby. I'm about to get that princess. She was thinking, this is it. Like right? he wanted, he wanted a girl. He wanted a thug. He wanted it, right. And then to find out it was Chris, and then the little rodents and their faces are burned. It's like it's very disappointing. It's a letdown. And Chris knew that Malia was open up that box, get excited, and then he automatically see that he had burnt their faces. And then talking about something to, to death, do his part. And I do mean death. He was threatening her. Um, but I guess in his mind, like, oh, okay. Uh, gonna seal the deal. <laughs> Malia should be arriving at 3 p.m. To, to give me her soul. I, I don't know. I don't know. Chris has a problem. And uh, there's only a couple of like, mental institution. And I don't think he's going to be going to a mental institution. So maybe a jail or hell might work really, really well for Chris. Okay. Mm -hmm.